Today I thought I'd talk to you about different areas you can live in when you come to Siem Reap. This was one of the things that I found difficult to find information about um, before we came, so hopefully this will help people who are about to come over. So if you imagine Siem Reap as divided into four, so north to south by the highway and east to west by the river, that leaves you with four quadrants. And this video I'm going to take you around each of those four quadrants, talk about the um, good and bad things about each, and then you can make a better decision. Also help you when you're looking online and you see um, that people mention these four areas, you'll know where they're talking about. I'd say a fair chunk of the expats that live in Siem Reap live inside that orange circle. Not all, but a lot. I think um, the longer you're here, the more likely it is that you'll be one of the people that live outside of that circle. But for people just coming over, you're gonna find yourself in that area. The first area we're gonna look at is called Kokchak and it has a big market called Sa Kralan. It's also home to Khmer Pub Street. It's a very local area and we'll go and have a look around it right now. Okay, I've just arrived in the Kok Chak area, parked the bike, just have a little walk. This is not an area that I'm familiar with at all, but yeah, that makes it more interesting. Come and have a walk around. It's very local as you can see. Lots of signs for apartments to rent. Little shops. Yeah, it's nice and leafy in this little area. It's cute. Let's go inside the market, have a look there. A different market. It's kind of got buildings all around the outside and then um, the market stalls in the middle. Cool. Wow, this is a really unusual and beautiful market. Yeah, so you got the wet market in the middle and then a whole stack of buildings curving around the outside. It's nice. If you're wondering if there's any apartments to rent in this area, there's a whole stack of brand new um, ones that haven't been lived in yet for sale. I guess they'd be for rent as well. It's very nice and leafy. I'm surprised. It's nice. Look at that. It's as pretty a street as you could hope for in Simri. Gorgeous. Nice and shady, leafy. There's kind of these three-story places on either side, like terraces almost. Shops at the bottom and probably apartments above. Yeah. Nice. It's a local restaurant here. Beautiful. Some more stalls. Seems like a lot of things are closed at the moment, but it's just so nice under the trees. It's a crazy busy restaurant on the corner here. I have no idea what it's called. See if I can find out when I get home and link it below. But yeah, Sunday morning it's just going crazy. It's the place to be, it would seem. Next up, we're going to have a look at Sla Kram and see what we can find there. I'm in Slawkram now, on the riverside, and this is a really nice area too. I always thought it would be nice to live here. The riverside's really shady, and there's lots of, lots of watts dotted along as you go north up the river. We'll go and take a look at some other areas in Slawkram in just a minute. 
So I'm just beside Wat Polen Car at the moment. It's one of the bigger watts on the north side of the city. It's um, a really good place to come if you're interested in seeing um, seeing monks and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. You can see that really easily in this area. Just stopped here because there happens to be a sign for apartment available for rent, three bedrooms and one bedroom. And you see these signs all over the place, but it just shows that these people are organized and um, probably speak a bit of English and definitely willing to negotiate the price at the moment. Just turned down another street in Slaw Cram and there's a lot of local stuff, but then you can also find <laughs> yeah, a new apartment block like that. Rooms for rent. You're good to go. I don't know. Maybe Slaw Cram's not the good place to be. They sell ice on the streets. Look at this. Look at this. Blatant sale of ice. Not trying to hide it. Out and about. Out of the back of a truck. Waiting at the lights. Nice and hot. On the other side of the highway, Sala Kamruak is the next area to look at. Okay. I've crossed the highway and I'm now in Sala Kamruak. And I'd say that area is divided into two main parts for the purposes of our talk today. The first part's um, Watbo and the second part is Wat Damnak. So at the moment I'm in Watbo. Just turned off the street called Lok Tanui and um, here there is a very big football, I don't know, fields? Yeah, so there's stacks of them over that side as well. This is where we came to play Ultimate Frisbee um, when we did that a few months back. It was good fun. Um, just a little bit scared I'd get hurt, but anyway. So this is Watbo, go and have a look around. So Watbo is home to one of the two concrete drains in Siem Reap. You'll need to um, just make sure you don't live too close to one of those, because as you can see, the water is pretty disgusting. Just down there, um, we looked at apartments, um, just on the right here, just in that building, I think. Um, and the people that were living in there hadn't moved out yet. And they said that, yeah, the smell can be quite bad um, at different times of the day, depending on the wind direction and stuff. There's actually a bit of a more permanent cover over the drain just down there. But still, I don't think you'd avoid the smell. It's a shame because it's really pretty. Watbo is home to the biggest schools in Siem Reap. This is one of the international ones. I think it's an American one, but it's very close to the um, Watbo Primary School as well. This is quite an interesting corner to stop at. So right now I'm looking at Watbo, and then if I just move around here, this is a school called King Glory International School. Just keep going again. There's an apartment building just there, and um, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm just really impressed with the garden. The flowers are really lovely there. Someone's taken a lot of effort to make that look nice. So I'm just on High School Road now. <laughs> Obviously, this is the road where the high school is. Um, it's a very big high school and it has a really good reputation, so a lot of students come from out of town to study there and um, this is Australian Centre for Education aka ACE where I used to work when I was teaching. Okay I've just turned off uh, High School Road down towards Wat Damnak so we're kind of Moving away from the Watbo area towards the Wat Damnak area now. I'll just go up there a little bit and show you a bit more. There's a lot of road construction going on in Siem Reap at the moment, so 
Uh, hopefully it'll be all finished by the time people start to come back, but everything's just an absolute mess in some areas. So this is the corner of um, Salakamurik Road, that's it, just going up there. But um, just stopping off here at the pharmacy. This is one that we come to a lot because they seem to have good prices and they speak good English. So yeah, good to know. It's another little part of what Damnak, that's Star Bar, good point of reference. Down that little alley between Star Bar and 7-Eleven is where um, the Rambutan Resort is. So if you want to um, Google that, you'll be able to see where I am, or Star Bar. This restaurant over here, Khmer Grill, used to do really well um, back in the day. But as you can see, their front has been ruined by the road work as well. But I think they have plans to come back bigger and better. Um, once the construction's finished. So that's good to hear. Still on the riverside here, I just wanted to show you, this is Angkor Muscle Gym. You can't see from the outside, but the place is huge. Um, there's table tennis next door. Uh, it's all part of the same complex. It's a dollar ago. Jeremy did a video about Angkor Muscle Gym a while back, so I'll link to that in case you want to see. But it's probably the pick of the local gyms and by local I mean um, old school and no air conditioning. Last stop today is Fay Duncombe. If Salakam Ruik is home to most of the schools in Siem Reap then Fay Duncombe is home to um, most of the tourist kind of aspects. So the old market, Pub Street, Soxan Road, Tapple Road, all of those things are in Fay Duncombe. Across the river again, and I'm in Svedankum. This is Smiling Hearts Road, and they're one of my favourite little roads in Siem Reap, actually. Just down there, there's a place called Villa Pumpkin, and my hairdresser um, works from there. I know some expats that live there long term as well. Nice place. Yeah, it just has a nice feel around here, I don't know why. This is a crown market. It used to be in a big old rambling series of wooden sheds and shacks, but they've just made these new um, covered awnings and I think they're trying to move the bulk of it over to here. So yeah, it's a good thing to have if you live close by. This is a crown. I think this is what they're trying to move. It's just in the middle of the street. It's dusty, it's dirty, it's a bit hectic. People in pajamas. Lots going on. Honestly, if I keep seeing stuff like this, I'm never going to get home. Wow. Look at the use of that wood. It's like a forest. That's just nuts. Oh, wow. I've just stopped off at Night Market Road. And yeah, it's getting really hot. But that's a place called the Missing Socks Laundry and Cafe. And I just like how you can get, you know, relatively modern stuff, but then you just pan the camera around and there's a traditional building over there. We're heading back towards the um, central tourist area of Siem Reap, which is also in Svedankum. So the old market and the um, pub street kind of area. Yeah, so we're just kind of on the outskirts of that right now. So this is the corner of Night Market Road and Soxan. That's Elia Greek Kitchen over there. We got Mexican, fine Mexican and Khmer cuisine there. And I'll just show you. This is what it's like on Soxan Road right now. So as if the, um, the virus and everything associated with that wasn't hurting business enough. I thought I'd just show you this lovely street corner. This is the area in Svedankum that's known as the French Quarter. Uh, it's got lots of beautiful old buildings. It's really shady, really nice. So yeah, you could have some lovely walks around here if you had an apartment close by. A bit more of a look down the street. It's definitely the wealthiest area of Siem Reap. Hands down.
Oh look, there's a sign. Hang on a sec. There we go. So you can live in this lovely area if you want to. You're probably going to pay a premium for it, but if you've got the money, why not? There is a bit of an emerging art scene in Siem Reap as well and Mirage is one of the contemporary art spaces where you can come and they have things like photography exhibitions, they show, um, you know, short films, things like that. It's good stuff. So that's the end of the tour around Siem Reap. I hope it helps you out, especially if you're looking in Facebook groups and things like that. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. If you'd like to ask questions about anything, any aspect of living in Cambodia or Siem Reap, please go ahead in the comments. We'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you. In the description of this video down below, you'll be able to find links to all of our social media, links to the other channels that we follow, people that are making content out of Siem Reap in Cambodia. So please have a look down there. And I'll also put some other information about this video too. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.